Was St. Patrick a Scotsman? Today is the 17th of March, the day everyone on the planet with the slightest drop of Irish blood in them finds an excuse to don a Guinness top hat and a green leprechaun beard and go on the booze. I mean, not me. I have to be up early on Saturdays to take my kids swimming. But who was St. Patrick? What did he do? And more importantly, where did he come from? So last night, my wife was asking my kids what green thing they were wearing to school today. And I find it a wee bit strange. I mean, in Scotland, we don't all do very much on St Andrew's Day. We don't do whatever Welsh people do on St David's Day. And we definitely don't start going on about the 1966 World Cup final on St George's Day. So why the fuss over St Patrick? Well, he is Scottish, my wife said. You should really make a video about that. This was 10pm on the 16th of March. I mean, the way my mind works, she'd basically thrown a grenade into the middle of the room and then walked away. Albeit a glittery green and orange party trickler grenade. Why did I say grenade in a video about Ireland and religion? So anyway, challenge accepted. Here goes. St Patrick is the primary patron saint of Ireland. He's considered as the Irish Apostle. There are a couple of other patron saints as well. I mean, you can't swing a cat around these islands without bumping into at least one seat. The market's been saturated for a while. Patrick lived sometime around the 4th or the 5th century. There's a bit of a debate about when, but I'm not going to get into that. First of all, I'm not qualified, and as my wife has thrown me under the bus, I also don't have the type. Various traditions have it that he was either born in Old Kilpatrick, just outside Glasgow, or possibly Ravenglass in Cumbria. Maybe a couple of other places, maybe Northamptonshire, and there is also a claim that he may have been from Wales. The Catholic Encyclopedia says he was Scottish though, so we're having that one. Old Kilpatrick means Old Church of Patrick. Weirdly enough, I lived about half a mile away from there when I met my wife and quite often wondered why the place sounded like it had been named after a malt whiskey. Patrick was a Roman citizen, and there was a Roman fort there, so it kind of fits. This was at really the tail end of the Roman Empire. They were departing for warmer climes and basically taking civilization with them. We know his grandfather was a priest in the early church, so Christianity wasn't exactly an unknown to him. We knew all that because he wrote it down in an autobiography. He left behind a declaration or a confessio, and also a letter detailing some of the events of his life. But it is sketchy, and he doesn't mention whether he's from Las Vegas or not. He was kidnapped when he was 16 by Irish pirates, and taken away and sold into slavery. He finished up working as a shepherd, which is a kind of a nice biblical analogy. And while he was hanging around with the flossy suicide machines, seriously, take it from a farmer's son, sheep art. Idiots. They wake up every day and think, how can I die in a weird and wonderful way? Sometimes they do it just by falling over. It's enough to drive you to drink or religion. Eventually, after six years of talking the woolly jumpers off the edge, he escaped. He persuaded the captain of a ship to take him back to the British mainland. But Patrick's sense of direction is a wee bit off, and he finished up wandering in the wilderness, starving for 28 days. He wasn't on his own, and when he prayed, and shortly afterwards they found some wild boar, that probably did quite a bit to persuade the people with him that he was on to something. Anyway, Patrick eventually headed back to Ireland on a mission to convert the heathen masses there to Christianity. He seems to have focused on a sort of trickle-down effect, working his magic on the children of kings, persuading princesses to become nuns and converting princes. At some point, by his own account, he seems to have been on trial for accepting gifts, but nothing stuck. I'm sure the money was just resting in his account. The thing is, accepting gifts in these days was actually seen as good manners. Part of the whole getting to know you, you scratch my back and I'll scratch yours process. So Patrick's stubborn kind of honesty left him in a bit of a precarious situation. If he didn't accept the gifts, it meant people didn't trust him. And that meant he wasn't under anyone's protection. At one point, he wound up in chains, having been robbed of everything he owned and beaten half to death. Eventually, after all his scrapes, he founded a church on a hill in Armagh. 
and became the bishop there, supposedly after curing a local chieftain with holy water, or maybe snake oil. He's famous for explaining the Holy Trinity to his followers using the leaves of the shamrock, for converting all those heathens, and of course, for banishing the snakes from Ireland. I kind of wish he'd done the same thing in the mother country, though. I hate snakes. They're everywhere in the area I grew up in. I mean, no one's actually died from a snake bite since the 70s, so they're pretty tame. But... Anyway, Patrick supposedly banished the snakes from Ireland, chasing them into the sea after they attacked him during a 40-day fast. I mean, I would get pretty grumpy during a 40-day fast. So, that's St Paddy. If I hadn't been sidetracked by my wife, I'd be making a video about St Andrew right now. In the meantime, I'm guessing all this Scottishness means you can celebrate them with one of these. Happy St Paddy's Day.